Right, once again, Kevin McCloskey, Ricky Portella, week number nine of Warrior Wrap-Up. Ricky, how did we go from, say, the Butler game in September to late October in this week number nine, 30 to 6 over the Wildcats of Eastern Guilford? Well, we were talking about that earlier and how the season just flown by. And, you know, perhaps it's, I don't know, maybe just we get to know the players and we look forward to seeing them improve every week, expecting them to improve every week. And I think for the most part we have. Um, you know, the Butler game in the end of the Eastern uh, Alamance game a little tough, but um, I think for the whole, as a whole, the team's progressed as we expected. Yeah, and, th and this was one of those games that, to be quite, everybody I talked to, it, you heard a couple of things come from the mouth. It was either blah or weird. It just wasn't a normal game. I mean, Eastern Guilford, first of all, they have a fantastic facility out here. I mean, this stadium and this field is just wonderful. They have great athletes for whatever reason they just can't seem to put it together well year in and year out um you know, their athletes are just unbelievable um i'm sure coach snuffer would love to have some yeah. uh, over at western but uh we're, we're very fortunate that it seems like every year um we, we come out ahead in this game and um to play athletes uh, like eastern uh, guilford helps us prepare for the playoffs it, uh, not looking past anyone, but it does because they, they have the speed that you run into in the playoffs, so it, it just helps. Yeah, and absolutely. You know, to be quite honest, in the first quarter, they kind of owned it. Uh, we were a little sluggish. They went up on top 6 to nothing, and then late in the first half, we took the lead, finally 14-6 to six going to halftime. To me, the turning point in the game, third quarter, Eastern Guilford gets the ball to open the third quarter, trailing 14-6. to six. They drive pretty much the length of the field, get down to about the 20-yard line, and have kind of a fluke fumble that just happens to fall into the hands of Trey McCollum, who returns it. We go on to score, and then from there on, we kind of pulled away and ended up shutting them out in a 30-6 to six win. Well, I was fortunate tonight. tonight I, I was up in the press box with some of the assistant coaches. So they saw some things in the second quarter and made some adjustments at halftime. They paid off, but uh, the play you mentioned, um, was big. We just hope the, the, the player for Eastern Guilford is, is okay. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Never want to see anybody get hurt. Another play of the game, um, just shortly after that, Perry Greason picks off a pass and does a pick six. You know, I call Perry Hound Dog because he has a nose for the ball. We're going to talk to him later. That was a big game, big play to kind of put it away. And then from there on out, it was kind of workmanlike, methodical. We, we just, you know, 30 to 6 won it. Um, looking ahead, I'm sorry, you're getting ready to say something. Well, I'm just saying, so we, we survive in advance. Absolutely, and some of the players we thought we were going to get back tonight, we didn't, but we're hopeful they will come back in the, in the weeks to come. Um, looking ahead, this is kind of hard because we've had some huge emotional games. Our season, if you look at it, it's like a bell curve, right? We started off like this, it peaked in the middle of the season, and now we're kind of on this downward slope in the sense that on paper, the two, we're, our last two games were against the two weakest teams in the conference. Not to any slight to Northeast Guilford, not to any slight to McMichael. They can, they can beat us, but on paper, they're games we absolutely positively should win. Ricky, what do we do in these last two games? What is, what is it that the Warriors can do to improve themselves in the last two games? Um, my solution would be to scrimmage because you look at our team and, okay, we, we are probably favored against Northeast Guilford and McMichael. So chances are our defense is going to be better than those two schools. So let's scrimmage. Let's hit hard because we have to figure out a way to turn our mental psyche, if you would, and get ready for the playoffs because the playoffs is going to be just like the middle part of our season was where it's going to be having to get way up here, and it's going to be very hard to get from where we are now emotionally to that point. So scrimmage. Yeah, absolutely. Wait, well, good, good way to phrase it. And I want to give a shout-out to some guys. Just like last week, th this week um, our big stars performed well. Talking about big stars, Trey and Darius performed well, but they weren't dominating. Kudos to Eastern Guilford. Their defense, I thought, was outstanding. We put up 30 points, but it was closer than that, folks. Kudos to them. But kudos to Western Islands for finding other guys to make plays. Chrisman, Mansfield with another touchdown. You know, it was a good game for Western Alamance. And, and the defense stepped, to, stepped up, too, as you mentioned, Perry, with the, with the pick six. Um, and then the um, almost a uh, safety. So uh, it was good. We'd Our defense. Safety. Yeah. We'd have safety. Yeah. All right, so we're going to close it up, try and grab a couple of guys for interviews. So 30-6 to 6 tonight, Kevin McCloskey, Ricky P. saying good night. We'll see you next week.